In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the Blender speaker object. I'll show you how to make two animations. One that demonstrates positional sound and the other that demonstrates directional sound. Press X to delete the cube. In the Add menu, Add Speaker. Click the Speaker Properties button. Click the Open Sound File button. Go to the folder where you have your sound file. Select the file and open. Click Play and you should hear the sound file. The sound is quiet even though the volume is set to 1. With positional sound, the volume gets less the greater the distance the user is from the speaker. The camera's location is the location of the user's eyes and ears. The attenuation, as the tooltip says, is how strong the distance affects the volume. Setting the attenuation to zero means that distance doesn't affect volume. The volume will be whatever it's set to here, regardless of the location of the user. Setting the attenuation to a high value, the volume will be very low because you don't have to be very far from the speaker for the minimum volume to be reached, which at the moment is set to zero. Select the camera, click the Object Properties button, right click on the Location Values and Reset All to Default Values, right click on the Rotation Values and Reset All. Set the Y Location to minus 2 and set the X Rotation to 90. A speaker object emits sound, but it does not affect light in any way. If I render the scene, we see nothing. To make the animations, I'm going to link the speaker to a mesh object, Add Mesh Cone. Zooming in with the mouse wheel, press S to scale, 0.5 and Enter. Press S to scale, Z for the Z-axis, 0.5 and Enter. I'm going to make the speaker the child of the cone. Before I do that, I must apply the scale. In the Object menu, Apply Scale. Select the speaker, and in the Parent field, select the cone. And we need to make an adjustment of minus 0.125 to the Z location of the speaker relative to the cone. Select the cone, set its X rotation to minus 90, and in the Object menu, Apply Rotation. To animate the cone, I'm going to insert keyframes. My rhyme for inserting keyframes is go to frame, make change, insert keyframe. Go to frame, go to frame 1. Make change, set the Y location to 0, it's already 0. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. To insert a second keyframe, go to frame, go to frame 125. Make change, set the Y location to 10. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. Zoom back to see where the cone has gone and shift a middle mouse button to pan. To insert a third and final keyframe, click the jump to end button to go to frame 250. Make change, set the Y location back to zero. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. Set the total length of the animation to 500 frames. Change the 3D view window to a graph editor window. In the channel menu, extrapolation mode, make cyclic. Now the animation will repeat continuously. Change the window back 
to a 3D view, select the speaker and click the speaker properties button. The reference distance is the distance at which the volume is 100%. With the outer and inner cones set to 360 degrees, the sound is not directional. If I set the reference to 2, Anywhere within a radius of 2 from the speaker, the volume will be 100%. I found that an attenuation value of 5 demonstrated the effect well over a distance of 10 units. Rewind and play, and the volume decreasing with distance is demonstrated. I have jumped back to the point just before I inserted the keyframes. To demonstrate directional sound, I'm going to animate the cone revolving, spinning about the z-axis. I'm going to insert two keyframes. For the first keyframe, go to frame 1, make change, set the z-rotation to 0, right-click, insert single keyframe. To insert the second keyframe, go to frame, frame 125, make change, set the Z rotation to 360, insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe, change the 3D view window to a graph editor window, in the view menu, view all, in the key menu, change the interpolation mode to linear. That makes the cone spin at a constant speed. In the channel menu, set the extrapolation mode to linear extrapolation. That makes the cone spin continuously. Change the window back to a 3D view window. Select the speaker and click the speaker properties button. The first thing I'm going to do is set the attenuation to zero, turning positional sound off, the volume will not be affected by the distance between the speaker and the user. Now any effect on volume will be due to directional sound, the angle at which the speaker is pointing at the user. Set the outer cone angle to 180, set the inner cone angle to 90, and set the outer volume to 0.1. The two cones give three regions. Inside the inner cone, you are in front of the speaker and the volume is 100%. The next region is outside the inner cone, but inside the outer cone, and the second line of the tooltip applies between inner and outer cone, the volume is interpolated. In this region, you are in front of the speaker, but to the side, so you don't get the full force of the speaker, so the volume varies from 100% to the outer volume, which is 10%. The third region is outside the outer cone. The user is behind the speaker, in all this region, the volume is the outer volume, which is 10%. Most of the sound energy emitted from a speaker will travel in front of the speaker, but due to the nature of sound waves, some of the energy will go behind the speaker. I'm going to set the total length of the animation to a thousand frames, rewind and play. And I think that gives a reasonable simulation of the sound from a revolving speaker. In the file menu, external data automatically pack into dot blend will pack the sound file into the blender file. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the finished files for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the link. 
Thanks for watching and goodbye.